Well, what should I do? Do I bow? Do I curtsy? Wayne Pearce, thank you for joining us on The Fan. Well, I see you. Great to be here. Having us in your backyard, the Wayne Pearce Hill. Yes, it's, um, I've been manicuring it very well over the years, haven't I? It's not so, a bad backyard. So people don't realise on non-game days you're actually here having family barbecues and just hanging around. <laughs> all, that, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I want to talk the local hero story through. Um, Balmain through and through, where did you grow up? Uh, well, actually, I was born in Balmain Hospital and I lived in East Balmain, in <laughs> Ten Duke Place, East Balmain. Um, Daily Messenger spent some time, apparently, in Duke Street, which is the next street, and Neville ran lived just around the corner many years before Former me. Former Premier, yeah. Uh, but it was, um, it, so I, I lived my early years down there. My dad worked on Leichhardt Council and he got a job as the caretaker of this ground. Wow. And uh, so he moved from being a street cleaner to being a, a, um, a caretaker of the ground, which what came with that was a house straight across the road. So I lived across Amazing. the road, uh, <laughs> like literally 30 metres under the fig trees from Leichhardt Oval. So. You were born to play for Balmain. You could play for no one but the Balmain Tigers, and, and that's the way it turned out. Motivated by the 69 grand final, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So what happened was we, myself and my two younger brothers both followed the Tigers. Um, you know, we were passionate supporters of the Tigers. We'd come and sit on the hill up here when the ground ran the other way. Yeah. So the ground actually pretty much changed uh, 90 degrees sure. to go north-south. It ran the other way, big oval shape. Uh, we used to come and watch the game slide down the hill, do all that sort of stuff. And, um, and what happened was the Tigers won the game, won the, the comp in 1969, they beat South, and us kids, we were all motivated and pumped to play, so mum and dad took us down and signed us up for Balmain Police Boys, and um, that was the start of That's Rugby League career. I signed up in the under-10s. Hot dog seller outside of Leichhardt Oval, true story? Yeah, yeah, so to get some pocket money uh, from about the age of... Actually, actually, I started selling cordial soft drinks, actually, before. Oh. They, they, were, they were cordial drinks. Oh, that's right. It's a hill. stepping stone to, to big was, things. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that was my starting uh, job, was was a little tray carrying cordials, selling cordial on the, on the hill around Leichhardt Oval. I was doing that when I was about 12, and then uh, got to about 14, and I'd served my apprenticeship, so they gave me a job selling hot dogs inside the main gates wow. here at Leichhardt Oval. And I can still remember my clear... Uh, mem really clear memories is when this ground opened as the premier night sporting event with the best lights in the Southern Hemisphere mm. for the Amco Cup in 1974. You were the hot dog seller at, I was at a hot dog night. seller inside wow. the gate. So born to play for Balmain and as it turns out your first grade debut 1980. I mean can you take us back there and what the whole reaction of the family was when you are suddenly getting a jersey to run out in first grade for the Balmain Tigers? Yeah, it was uh, it was very it was quite surreal, and, and I mean, what was uh, special also was not just the family support, but there was a whole oh, there would have been a couple hundred students from the school uh, that were all my, my schoolmates and and kids in the younger years at school because I went to school just up the road. It was of course you did. Like a, <laughs> of course like you did. High school, <laughs> and they all came along as well, and it was just uh, an amazing experience. Yeah. In the space of a few years, you captain of the side as well. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, I started captaining the side in, in, in 1983. Um, I was fortunate enough to go on the Kangaroo Tour the previous year, and Frank Stanton was my club coach, he was also the Australian coach, and he gave me the, the gig of uh, as captain of the club. So you'd be 22 or 23? Uh, I, I, actually, I, actually, I actually, I turned 23 that year, so I was yeah. 22. 22, yeah. captain of the Balmain Tigers. Yeah. It gets yeah. better, this story. <laughs> Let us stay on the club career first of all, and I jump straight ahead to 88, 89. Grand finals. Yeah, you had to do that, didn't you? Yeah, huh? <laughs> well, cut off. I was having a good day, beautiful <laughs> sunny day at like an Oval, and you go and talk about 88 well, 89. Well, in all honesty, hand on heart, how torn are you by that? Do, do, like, do you wake up in cold sweats at night? Have you, have you moved on? <laughs> I moved on. Yes. I moved on. I, actually, to be honest, um, it, it was never... The closure came around about... Uh, I think it was actually 2005 when the Tigers were in the grand final... West Tigers were in the grand final. And uh, News Limited had this idea, well... Or we get the guys from the 89 side together to go and watch the game at, at a studio that, they, that they'd that they hired. Uh, and we watched, we all watched the game together. And it was sort of like therapy, really. Yeah. We sort of talked through it and some of the moments in the game that went our way, someone, some moments didn't go our way. And <clears throat> that was the, probably the, the point where we were able to put it to bed. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, it was, yeah, it was just missed opportunities. Younger viewers right now know of this guy, Wayne Pearce, and those that come to the ground, there's the Wayne Pearce Hill. He's one of the greats of the game. He's a Hall of Famer um, and the local hero story. But if they just looked at stats, they only see... And when I say only, because 
the, the, the club greats these days play 250, 300, 350, bordering on 400 games. Your career is 193 first grade matches. Um, first of all, we need to make the point, you retired at age 30. That's very young. It was, it was. So I had a, that was my 11th season, so I started playing at the age of 19 in first grade. Um, but, but, but I played, I, oh, I'm not a big guy, uh, I played above my weight. Probably shouldn't have played, but really, really I was probably too small to play, but I managed to get there. And um, because I played above my weight and played a pretty physical game, my, bo my body pretty much wore out. Um, my knee joints actually um, really wore out. and. Um, that's why I had to, to give the game away. In fact, the last year that I played, I, I only I only played every second game. It was um, to, I had to get my body right. There were also some some pretty scary moments in your career with eye injuries, serious eye injuries, a couple of times. Um, that is it fair to say could have ended your rugby league career? Yeah, well, my, my rugby league career nearly ended after the first season. So, in a trial game in 1981 against Cronulla. Um, uh, I put a bit of a, a step on, which was unusual for me. Probably surprised okay. the guy who was tackling me was Gavin Miller, and he stuck his arm out and it caught my eye, and I detached the retina in my eye, and um, it was it was pretty scary because I I didn't know whether well, firstly when I went down to the ground, I couldn't see it. My eyes just pitch black, and then the trainer came on, and the trainer said, "Uh oh, shit," and I thought there's a bit of something going on here, and then he called the doctor on, and then went straight to the hospital, and I had to lie there for 48 hours with double eye pads on mm. to, to try and let the blood clear because they couldn't see through the eye right. to see whether or not there was damage to the retina. So I've got my fingers crossed for two days because they said, you know, we may need to operate and then when the blood cleared and they could have a look through and see the retina, they said, you've got a detached retina so we have to operate. So they, they operate on the eye and at that stage, I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to play or not again. Uh, but I had a, an excellent surgeon and, and um, he did an amazing job on the eye. Always blurred, so I... I'm blurred in this eye, yeah. so that was always a challenge, trying to catch high balls or balls coming from that side. Um, I dropped quite a few in my career because it was just blurred, yeah. nothing I could do about it. But, uh, but that was it, anyhow, but uh, ended up playing many years after that. Let's talk representative football. First of all, New South Wales. Um, you can never change a first. You, you are the captain of the first clean sweep series won by New South Wales. Happy, happy memories? Fantastic memories, you know. I, I mean, it was the, the two really standouts in State of Origin was I was, I was uh, in the team and vice captain the previous year when Stevie Morton was captain, yeah. and we won the series 85. for the first time. That was '85, and then uh, Steve retired, and I was given the gig as the captain, and um, we ended up winning the series 3-0. But it was really close. Like it was, I think, four points, four points, two points, or something in the three games. But it could have gone either way, all the games. But we ended up winning 3-0, and it was, uh, it was fantastic. Uh, feeling to have won that series after having been on the back foot for so many years with State of Origin. Test football, representing your country, it's the Triple A, it's the Kangaroo Tour. 82 is when you make your breakthrough and the Kangaroos go on to win every game. Like, <laughs> how, how much better could it get? Well, And you play it, every test. Well, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't think I, I was going to get picked because, um, you know, you had Ray Price, who was the, who was the top one there, there was a lot of other good, good players in line and um, I had my, my ticket booked to Hawaii. I'd never been to Hawaii before, so end of season trip I was to Hawaii. Uh, so I had my, my, my paid all my, my money for the flights and, and accommodation, all that sort of stuff. And and on the night, that night uh, of the grand final, because that's when they announced the teams, our reserve grade team had won the grand final. So we were at, at, at Balmain Lease Club celebrating that achievement and um, it was a great night and then Frank Stanton who was the club coach, my club coach at the Tigers, also the Australian coach, who didn't give me any insights that I might have been a chance yeah. leading up to that, came over and tapped me on the shoulder and said, you're on the kangaroo tour. Wow. I nearly fainted. And um, it was an amazing experience to, to go on that tour because that's the first time that uh, a, a tour had gone through and, and been undefeated as well. Now, all through your career, reputation, um, ahead of your time as a trainer, nutrition, Physical fitness, never drink? No, nah, no. Nah. Not a drop? <laughs> no, I, um, I never drank never drunk alcohol in my life, no. There you go. I, um, the thing is, in terms of my, my size, I mean, I, I wasn't a big guy, so I had to try and get an edge on the, on the players somehow. So for me, you know, I was all about the one percenters. It was about where could I squeeze a little bit of extra out of myself in, in physical sense, in a preparation sense, with diet, with, with the mind. Uh, I worked over time uh, in terms of trying to develop skills. Um, but 
for me, that was that was where I, I saw my competitive advantage was in that in preparation. In modern day context, we can make a reference to your son Mitchell. So you at your heaviest in your career, what 89, 90 k? Yeah, playing yeah, in the back yeah, row. Yeah, yeah. And what's Mitchell? 90. He's about 91. Yeah, he's, he's heavier than you playing he's, half. He's, uh, yeah, yeah. He's um, and and probably an inch taller. So and he's playing halfback nowadays. So they're, they're, they're supposed to be small. That's that's how the game's changed. Because when I played. You had to work a job. Um, it was uh, semi-professional. Um, it was it was a lot different game, and, they, and they, you had to play 80 minutes. So the big guys, the bigger guys, like the biggest guys around then, were probably on my team. You know, sort of Steve Roach and, and Paul Siren amongst the biggest in the game. And and um, but they were 80-minute players. Mm. Yeah, true. Now going on this healthy lifestyle, how is it, Wayne, that we end up with the Wayne Pierce testimonial port? Now you're telling me. Never had a drink. You didn't even try the Wayne Pierce testimonial port that I've still got a bottle of that's been kept in the garage all these years. I know. I can tell it's been kept in somewhere. Yeah, that's right. There it is. There it is. Do you want to... There we go. Well, yeah, I reckon I've had some people that do drink. They say it tastes like rocket fuel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite strange. That okay. I've never I drank in no. my life and I've got a well, got port. Yeah, well, there we go. Yeah. We'll put that away. Yeah. A proud father sits beside me right now. For everything you achieved in rugby league, you are now living another life. Um, watching your son, your son Mitchell, and, and play at at origin level, first grade level. What's it like? It's. I mean, I feel so fortunate to absolutely be able to watch Mitchell. Um, you know, he's played over 250 games already, mm. and uh, for me to go and be able to watch him and and just. When I'm at, well, it's really weird. When I'm at the game watching, I feel as though I'm out there with him. Well, wow. um, you know, I'm sort of playing every play that he plays. And so, at, sometimes parts of the game I'm like that. Other parts of the game I, I've got the coach's hat on, and I'm thinking, <laughs> "Well, you, why don't you do that or do that?" Um, but it's it's just great to be able to to just sit there and watch uh, him not only just play the game, but playing in the in the key position that he's involved in pretty much everything. So, and I'm, I'm very very proud of the way. He, yeah, he's come forward, yeah. A few other things, random ones. Um, Rothman's medal winner, 1985, which is the equivalent of the Daly M. Is that a higher suit or was that your own? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually. You never returned it? Or? No, no. I don't know where the colour came from, but um, <clears throat> and anyhow, I went to the, I went to, to the, it was a higher one. Yeah, yeah of course it was. Of course it was. You're higher than a suit. We did in those days. Yeah, right? of course. You never really wear them. They wear a bow tie. It's <laughs> a bow tie. So I went along and the guy said, this is a pretty good colour match. Your, your complexion, I'll wear it, so I'll wear it along and it's, everyone has a laugh at me. Yes. <laughs> but you won the medal. Um, let's talk about the coaching career, both first grade and, and representative with uh, New South Wales. D did it bring you the same enjoyment, the same reward? O obviously a different challenge. Yeah, it's a different challenge. Coaching is, is absolutely a different challenge. Um, the the thing about coaching was it, it 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 taught me so much about leadership. Uh, I thought, you know, decent leader, pretty good leader, having captain club, captain New South Wales, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but when you come to coaching, you know, you, on, as a player, as a captain, you're out there, you basically follow me. Mm -hmm. uh, as a coach, you're in the grandstand, so you can't follow you. You've got to get inside their heads, and it really taught me a lot about the psychology of, of motivating people. It taught me about the psychology of behaviour, um, and, it, and it's been, it was a fantastic education into what makes people tick. And for me, um, that's something that's really supported me post my, my, my coaching career as well. You've given the game so much, the game's given you plenty, but you're still involved in rugby league up to your eyeballs. I mean, on the commission as well, is, is that... Um, that's also challenging, I guess, a labour of love. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's it's, it's another, I suppose, um, element or another dimension um, to, to the game is the administration of the game. And it is challenging. Um, can be frustrating at times, but it can be very rewarding to know that you're actually, um, in, in some small way, making a, bit, a difference to the game. And, and uh, you know, we've got um, some sort of more goals that we want to conquer as a commission um, and you know I, I'm, I'm keen to, to, to help Peter Beattie and the other commissioners achieve those goals. As a player too, um, you're a bit of a pioneer in terms of television superstar and I will say that because you were a, a current player at the time who was working on television, big profile, you, E.T., Andrew Eddinghausen, Peter Sterling, the television career though even includes an appearance on Perfect Match. Wearing a wearing a nappy, obviously. Yeah, well, that was uh, that, that was an interesting one. Yeah, so 
um, Walshie, who Brian Walshie, uh, he said, mate, this would be good for the game, you know, you get a different different, yes. different audience that would sort of, you, you can connect with and all that sort of stuff, and he talked me into it. Yeah. And I look back and I think, how stupid was I? <laughs> I had wings on and I had the nappy on, and I was, I was Cupid, Cupid on perfect oh, match. right. That was okay. it. That's your story. <laughs> um, I understand that you actually were requested to wear that, but anyway, that's the story. Um, there was also the telly movie, The First Kangaroos. I mean, it's Wayne Pierce, yeah. the thespian, <laughs> if you don't mind me saying, the actor. <laughs> How many roles have you had in your career? I've had you one said, and never been say, asked again. You say, how many words did you say? <laughs> Zero. Oh, wow. <laughs> but um, it was an outstanding performance, I was told. Didn't get nominated for anything, though, but um, yeah, no. all, all 15 seconds of it. <laughs> all right. Now, there's another string to the Wayne Pierce bow. We could talk all night, all day, and into the next month, but music. You know, Wayne Pierce and the... The big hitters. Big hitters. Yeah. The music performing on stage is still a love of yours. Bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's an outlet for me and I um, really enjoy it. You know, it's, it, it, it's, there's a team element, strong team element to being in a band and, and that allowed, that, um, that dimension allows me to sort of feed that need of wanting to be part of a team as well. So it was, it's, it's actually fun. Yeah. Now to finish, Wayne, on last week's show, I asked Willie Kahn, um, the, the great former Bronco, was there a day from his career that he would love to go back and relive. And it was like multiple choice that went all the way down the alphabet because he had grand final wins and origin moments and test moments and first grade debut. What about you? Would it be one of the glory moments or would it be, would you like another crack at, dare I say, 88, 89? Um, yeah, I, I suppose there's two that stand out. One is is probably another crack at, at, at 89. Um, the other one is was, was quite... A, uh, unusual, but it was my last match doing the lap around this oval. Sure. Because I can remember jogging around the oval, and uh, as I'm jogging around, there were, there was packed, there were people throwing streamers, but there were you know, guys, obviously, they were, they were the labourers, they were wharfies, they were whatever, and they all had tears in their eyes. So for me, that was, that was, um, yeah, it was hard to comprehend at the time. Yeah. And um, for me, that, that was just the most amazing experience. I think we cried with you, Wayne. No, no, it was a hell of a day. I mean, it was the local hero, last game. Didn't end up in victory, sadly, on that particular That's the thing. day. So, if you ask me what I would love to um, relive, was play that game again, win, and then do the lap. And then walk past as you go down the tunnel for one last time. There's a picture of you holding up the, the cup from 89. Yes, the 89 cup, really. That's it, made in heaven, eh? Have we covered it all, Wayne? We probably haven't. There's probably plenty more, but... My goodness, what a career you've had. What a life you're still giving in rugby league. Uh, rugby league's better for having Wayne Pierce as part of it. Thanks for coming on the show, mate. Thanks, Fossey. Yeah. Wayne Pierce on the fan. <laughs> Pretty good.